Oh, we're here in the center of Sketchy U for their holy inspired color festival. Toss on your white tee, pack your pockets with powdered pigment, and join us as we talk about the bedazzling and prismatic subjects that are UV visible spectroscopy and IR spectroscopy. First things first, what is spectroscopy? Spectroscopy is a way of using light to probe compounds and then learn more about their structure. Just like the difference between the liquid and powdered paints these two revelers are flinging, different compounds absorb different wavelengths of light, hence those different paint colors. And as a reminder on wavelength, this low energy gal is shooting off a long, slow wavelength of paint to remind you that longer wavelengths of light are lower energy and lower frequency. In contrast, this high energy guy is chucking an intensely fast and short paint wave. That's because short wavelengths pack a lot of punch or energy and have high frequencies. And those measurement lines on both of their containers, they're to let you know that spectroscopy works by passing light through a compound, then measuring how much of each wavelength of light within a given range is absorbed or transmitted. With that information, you can determine things about the compound structure, like which functional groups are present. So let's get into it. We'll start with IR spectroscopy, IR short for infrared. Unsurprisingly, IR spec uses infrared light, a type of fairly low energy light with a wavelength below that of red light. That's why we will cover it below this pleasing cloud of red paint. Now, Molecular bonds are always vibrating. Just like these bumping speakers. The frequency of infrared light can actually end up being identical to the vibration of the bonds within a molecule. In fact, IR spectroscopy works when the frequency of some of the light passed through a compound matches the frequency of a bond vibration, which explains sketchy use reminder to match our vibe. A little aggressive for a party, but when those frequencies match up, that wavelength of light is absorbed by that bond. An IR spectrometer measures which frequencies of IR light are absorbed, and since different bonds absorb different frequencies, you can then figure out what kinds of bonds are present in that molecule. The way bonds vibrate is a lot like the way springs vibrate. If you've got a tight spring, like this tightly coiled pogo stick, or you've got small objects on the spring, like this small student, the spring will vibrate very quickly. Bonds are the same way. Strong bonds and or light atoms create high vibration frequencies. In contrast, if you got a weak bond or one with really heavy atoms on either end, the vibrations will be slow. To remind you, we got the larger pogoer on a looser, weaker springed stick, and she's bouncing at a more leisurely pace. And while I admire their commitment, I don't see pogo sticks replacing bikes for campus transport anytime soon. <laughs> Someone misunderstood this event and thought they'd be painting for reals. Uh, their loss, our gain, will use their masterpiece, which just happens to look like an IR spectrum, to talk about the vibration frequencies of different functional groups. The real IR spectrum looks like these upside down mountains. Each dip downwards is called a peak and represents frequencies of light that were absorbed by the molecule. Before we dive into the specifics, we should mention that the y-axis on an IR spectra measures percent transmittance. This lets you know how much of each frequency of light traveled through the compound being analyzed. Low transmittance means lots of that type of light was absorbed by the compound, and that's why the peaks that signal absorption are counterintuitively lower than the rest of the spectra, rather than higher. And on the topic of axis, the x-axis is measured in units called wave numbers. These are directly proportional to frequency. Okay, now to get into the specific peaks. First, NH and OH bonds, either from alcohols, amines, carboxylic acids, or amides, give very broad peaks, usually around the 3300 wave numbers. The OH heart NH graffiti by the broad mountain on the left of the canvas should help you remember this. And of course, it will ensure we never forget this couple's undying love until they break up a month after graduation, that is. Next, it looks like someone dropped their ketone key, right in the middle of the painting. And it's right near a sharp peak 
in this mountain scene. That's because the C double bond O bond of a carbonyl appears with a nice, tall, sharp peak just about here at 1700 wave numbers. And finger painting? Really? This preschool worthy art is here to remind you that the low wave numbers region of an IR spectrum, say less than a thousand wave numbers, is called the fingerprint region. Like finger painting, it's hard to interpret this region in any meaningful way. But also like a fingerprint, the specific collection of peaks and valleys is very individualized. No two compounds will have exactly the same set of peaks in the fingerprint region. Okay, that wraps up IR. Let's head to the library to check in on the students who are nobly foregoing the festivities in the name of the GPAs. The, the library might have been a color fest casualty with all that violet paint standing the stairs. All the better for us, since we're here to cover ultraviolet visible, or UV vis spectroscopy. Here's how it works. UV and visible light have a fair bit of energy. Enough energy, in fact, to excite an electron from a stable energy level, like an inner orbital, to a less stable energy level, like an empty outer orbital. This student, who's still toting a minus sign volleyball from this morning's practice, is very excited about heading to the library to remind you of this electron excitation. Or maybe she's just jazzed to study for her orgo exam. Anyway, the steps she's leaping up should remind you of the energy levels electrons jump up when they're excited by UV vis light. The frequencies of light that excite the electrons are absorbed by the molecule. The UV vis spectrometer measures the frequency of light that is absorbed, which provides clues on the compound structure. Now our next studier is dressed for success, and he clearly doesn't want to get paint on his white threads. The white clothes should remind you that most organic compounds appear white because they reflect all the visible wavelengths of light all at once. However, the big gaps in energy levels in organic compounds allows them to absorb higher energy UV light, which promotes big jumps in electron energy. Hence this guy's big steps as he hurries into the library. And note, very few organic compounds can also absorb visible light and thus are colored. Most notably, the ultra orange beta carotene, hence this fella's carrot with a beta shaped stem. And he's walking up the very teeny tiny steps to the library to remind you of the very small jumps in electron energy level that occur when beta carotene absorbs the low energy visible light. See how the carrot has a zigzag shape? That's not just the result of some strange genetic engineering. It's there to remind you of beta carotene's long conjugated zigzag chain of alternating single and double bonds. A long conjugated chain like this results in closely spaced molecular orbitals, so electrons don't have far to jump when they're excited by the absorption of light. Finally, the festive color wheel carrot top is carrying is a reminder that if a compound appears orange, like beta carotene does, that's because it's absorbing blue-green light, the colors on the opposite end of the color wheel. Now, I'm no art buff, but this powerful explosion of colors making me feel like this is more of a Pollock than a Rembrandt, but with that final stroke, it's now a completed masterpiece. And just to make sure the die is set, let's recap. Spectroscopy is a way of probing a compound using light. Different compounds interact with different frequencies of light. So measuring how a compound responds to various frequencies of light can let you make inferences about its structure and properties. IR spectroscopy can tell you what kinds of bonds are present in a molecule, and UV vis spectroscopy can identify the presence of long conjugated chains of pi bonds. Infrared spectroscopy relies on the idea that low energy light can match the frequency of vibration of chemical bonds. When the frequencies match, light is absorbed. Atoms of lower mass or strong bonds give rise to fast vibration, which absorbs higher energy infrared light. In contrast, weaker bonds, or bonds between heavier atoms, vibrate slower and absorb lower energy light. Few characteristic bonds to know are NH and OH bonds, which give broad peaks past 3,000 wave numbers, and CO double bonds, which give sharp peaks around 1,700. The fingerprint region, at low wave numbers, is also important to recognize. 
UV vis spectroscopy uses ultraviolet and visible light frequencies to excite electrons in a compound, causing them to jump up an energy level. The compound absorbs a specific frequency of light, depending on how much the electron jumped. Most organic compounds are white because they absorb higher energy light in the ultraviolet region, past human vision. Some compounds are highly colored, though, because they are highly conjugated, which allows their electrons to be excited by lower energy visible light. Okay, like any good art project, beautiful, but a mess. I'm gonna mosey into the library and pretend to study before I get tasked with cleanup duties. See ya!